here we are. It's me, John Park, and we're live in the workshop. I'm turning off the Echo device. Uh, yeah, it looks like I'm still making noises and pictures at you, so welcome everyone. Thanks for stopping by. It is that time of day and that time of the week for us to build some stuff and uh, talk about some cool makery things, some electronic stuff, some coding type of things, and, and uh, gosh, what else? Uh, what I'd love to do is actually get started with the coupon code for this week, uh, which is DRAWBOT. DRAWBOT will get you 10% off in the Adafruit store this, uh, this whole day, kind of ends at midnight. Uh, but use this code to get 10% off and you can fill your cart with all kinds of great stuff. You might have some ideas of new things you want after watching this episode. That would be nice. Uh, and uh, it's good on everything except for gift certificates, subscriptions, and software. So use the, uh, use the coupon code DRAWBOT. It is not Dr. Awbot, Mr. Certainly. <laughs> Although I do like that. I like the sound of that. Um, one thing after this sip of iced coffee, uh, that I want to mention is we are moving to an exciting new half hour format for John Park's workshop. Uh, I just mentioned it in the blog post earlier, so it's going to be shorter but still packed full of content. Uh, and uh, one thing that'll change is that I have actually built today's project in advance for a change instead of pulling it together uh, right here live on air, which is going to give us a chance to explore some more of the more important details and not worry about some of the tedious parts of the project. So uh, let me know what you think of the new format after, uh, after we give it a shot for a few weeks. Um, and that brings me to product of the week. So the product of the week for this week is, get ready for it, Adabox 007. So <clears throat> you may or may not know, after our Adabox quarterly subscription boxes have been out and in the hands of our subscribers, there is a version of the box that goes into the store. Uh, so if you missed out on the chance to get Adabox 7, now you can go in the store and pick it up and soon you'll be able to get Adabox 8. So as the boxes come out, the previous ones come online. So uh, 7, as you may know, uh, was the spy theme, so 007. And with that uh, spy theme came our Gemma M0, little programmable microcontroller, which we used for a ton of different projects. Uh, now, the Ada boxes always have an associated collection of learn guides that are tutorials that are designed specifically for the contents of that box. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's try some more coffee. Here we go. Um, and so the contents of the box can be used for a whole list of tutorials. So for the Gemma M0, we had um, small alarms and we had uh, Annoyatron devices that would beep. We utilized the uh, relative ease with which you can create USB mice and keyboards inside of CircuitPython. Uh, to create some sneaky little devices that will take over someone's computer and pop up scripts that do interesting things or move their mouse for them. So there are a bunch of projects including, uh, included with Adabox 07 using the Gem M0. And then as you can see here from uh, this uh, image, we've got lock picks. We have RFID and other uh, radio frequency blocking fabric to wrap around a phone. Uh, we had a software-defined radio and antenna, so you could tune in interesting things from around the spectrum, a practice lock, uh, and a whole bunch of other great stuff that supports the projects that came with it. So um, that also brings me to a, uh, yeah, actually, here's, here's the, let me pop over to this. This is the uh, item in the store, so that's not the subscription one. But uh, the reason I take you here is if you click on Adabox, you will notice at the top here is the subscription, and the subscription is now open for Adabox 9. So uh, we are going to be making some very cool stuff. We're just getting going. Uh, there's been some uh, secret stuff in the background that uh, Lady Ada and Phil B have been working on to prepare something new for this box. 
Um, and uh, I'll be getting together a bunch of creative projects for you to use. Uh, and, and that'll be an October edition, if that gives you any hints about uh, the possible theme for the next Adabox. So you can now uh, subscribe. So head to this uh, page. I think it's just adafruit.com slash Adabox will take you here. And uh, you can get started on subscribing to Adabox. Uh, so that, let's see, I'm going to check in with the chat. I can close that window now. Oh, you know what? I'll minimize that window. Um, John K is 009 going to have a Halloween theme? Ooh, that's an interesting thought. You can't get it out of me. Don't ask. Don't tell. Um, what else is going on in the chat? Ooh. LCD eyes and M4 boards. Yeah, you know what? I've never built one of the LCD uh, Phil B Teensy or Raspberry Pi eyes projects, and I'm thinking about doing one. Those look really cool. I love those eyeball projects. Um, all right, so that brings us to the Make Code Minute. Now, before I actually say it and play the video, I'm going to get prepared because uh, my new goal is, I don't know if you know, but I take the Make Code Minutes and then publish them separately so that they're little easy, digestible pieces that people can follow as sort of mini tutorials. I'm trying to keep them shorter, keep them down to two minutes uh, without doing a lot of editing. So uh, I have some stuff ready. Okay, I think we're ready. Here we go. So there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Make Code Minute. So for today's Make Code Minute, I have a couple interesting things. Here is a uh, green screened Circuit Playground Express that I have on top of my green screened browser. So there's a lot of green screening going on. Uh, and what I wanted to talk about today in Make Code is one of the most fundamental things, and that is using buttons. So if you look over here in the left, we have this input section, and there's this one block on button A, click. So I've set one of those down and then changed its drop-down menus, and I'm going to talk about what those are. Um, but these are these two buttons that are built right onto the board. So there's two little micro buttons. You can use those. And the ways you can use them, if you look at this block, it's got a lot going on. We've got buttons A and B, or button A plus B. So those are three, three different ways you can use those buttons uh, physically. And then the behavior they exhibit is based on either a click, which is down and up, a long click, which is holding it and then releasing it uh, for a little bit longer time. The, um, I'll say first the down makes more sense, and then the up. So those are different states. So right now, the way I have this programmed, uh, on button A, down, it's going to go red. So I click it, it goes red. And then when I release it, it goes to blue. So that's this basic button A down is red, and button A up is blue. Now button B I have set up, so when I press it and release it, that's the click, it goes to yellow. And that's right here, this button B click goes to yellow. Now when I do a long click, I'm going to click and hold and then release, it goes to magenta. And then the last thing I'll do is let me, uh, I'm going to pull out, I'm just going to delete these for a second here, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. And then I'm going to duplicate this one and change it to a button AB click, and that'll give us a different color. How about, uh, say, blue? So I'm going to download that to the board. I'm using the web USB, by the way. I'm going to talk about that in a future make code minute, but it downloads right to the board, no drag and drop. OK, so now it's on there. And if I press A, I get the red. And if I press A and B together, I get blue. So there's a lot you can do just with the built-in uh, this one block and the built-on buttons on Circuit Playground Express in Make Code, and then there's tons more you can do once you start involving other blocks. Uh, and so that is today's Make Code Minute. All right, so um, I just saw someone mention in the chat a drawing bot sounds groovy. I agree. So let's talk about drawing bots. Oh, let me get this. Uh, Circuit Playground out of my way. There, it's gone. Um, so, the uh, let's see. How do we want to how do we want to talk about drawing bots? So, 
A lot of people are probably familiar with a, uh, a type of drawing bot, uh, drawing machine really, uh, that is uh, called, usually it draws roulette curves and, and we're familiar with a spirograph. Uh, and that gives us usually elliptical or ovoid uh, shapes that are uh, lobes in a circular pattern. Um, that I actually built a little Lego uh, drawing bot, I can show you right here, that is based on that principle. So this is a really great popular design you'll see online. Um, so you, I, I pulled the table off so you could see it. And we'll ignore that rubber band, that's for holding the pen. Uh, and what happens is when we crank this handle, let me make it so you can see it well, there you go. Uh, you'll see that the, this part right here is moving in a pattern. So you'll see it moving up and down. And at the same time, the table is rotating very slowly. I think it's 1 to 32 or something like that, or 1 to 16. Um, so by moving one uh, table where the page is and then moving the pen, you get typical spirograph uh, patterns. And I, you know what? I don't have, I don't think I have any examples right here right now. But uh, you're probably familiar with spirographs and, and their variants. But there's another type of drawing machine that we're going to, um, look at today that I built and these come with different names. They, they are generally speaking different classes of a harmonograph uh, and the reason they're called this is they deal with the harmonics of uh, two inputs to the drive, so where the pen point is going, that are either slightly different radiuses or radically different radiuses uh, or same radius but traveling at slightly different speeds. So if you move a, uh, a pen point with two circles that are driving them at the exact same time, you'll trace an interesting pattern over and over again and you'll just have one dark line. Uh, as soon as you put one at a slightly different speed, you get a uh, traveling away from the path with every cycle that makes these beautiful shapes. Um, and in fact, one of the best ways I can talk about it is by showing you this great simulation. So this is a uh, uh, michaeldudak.github.io slash pintograph. Uh, and so a pintograph, uh, I said these are subclasses of a harmonograph. So a pintograph is a, uh, a name some people have given to motor driven uh, drawing machines like this uh, versus harmonograph often means the pendulum based one. So there's large pendula, usually three pendula, that are uh, creating the two axes of motion on the pen as well as another one that's moving the table. Um, they're beautiful, they take up a lot of space, so I thought we would build some smaller ones more based on this pentagraph um, style. So if I clear this uh, and look at the settings that I have right now that matter, I have a radius of 80 for the first drive and a radius of 80 for the second drive and I have the same length of arms for both arms. Uh, and then I have the, let's set the speeds to be the same. So with the same speed, what we're gonna do is trace this shape over and over and over again. Um, someone asked in the chat, pantograph. So this is, yeah, a sub uh, section of this machine is a pantograph. So the pantograph is essentially the scissor uh, mechanism that amplifies the motion uh, so you get larger, uh, depending on the geometry, you either get just a remote version of the motion or you get an a amplified version of the motion. And some of them have been turned into like drawing machines where you can sign your name and get five signatures. So a pantograph is, is the piece that's moving, uh, but the whole mechanism, the fact that it's moving with these two uh, circles is what's sometimes called pintograph. Uh, I know it's confusing, or a type of harmonograph. So watch what happens now. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to clear it. And then I'm just going to change one speed that was at 16, and let's change it to, uh, let's make one a little faster, 16.6. So just a small change. Uh, and now what you'll see is that that small change causes, that small change in speed causes a large change in the trace of the path. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually speed this up, which is one of the nice things you can do with a simulation. Uh, so you can very quickly see the type of shape that develops. And this um, sort of bent 
diamond shape is the intrinsic shape that's made by uh, this type of machine. Uh, and then everything that you can change about it will adjust things like the density of the lines, uh, the uh, skewing of the shape. So for example, if we clear this and change the length of one arm, let's make one 230 units. Everything else is the same. You'll see it's a similar intrinsic shape, but now it is sort of starting to skew to one side. Uh, and I'm thinking of it as left because I've been looking at these machines from top down, uh, not side to side like this. Um, and now if we reset that back to 300, and now I'm gonna make a change to the radius of Let's go to, let's make them small, how about 40? And I'm gonna keep them equal. You could also keep the speeds the same. Actually, let's try that. That's a better, more interesting demo. I'm gonna go same radius, 80 and 70, and then same speeds. Okay, so you see the intrinsic oval is different just based on having a slightly smaller radius. If this was back up to 80, and you can kind of do this mid-stream, mid we get that sort of perfect oval. Um, so let's make a really small radius. And we get this little itty bitty line. Uh, so I'm gonna bring this back up now to 80. And let's do some radically different speeds, which give you uh, uh, ultimately the same type of shape. Let me reset, do I have, yeah. Okay, everything else is equal. Uh, ultimately it's the same type of shape, but how many uh, lines it takes for the cycle to repeat itself changes. So I'll speed this up a lot. And one of the fun things you can do with these, you can stop them midway. You don't have to let them get to sort of full density. Um, if I slow this down, so here you can see with this radically different, uh, that's one cycle, essentially. Um, with this much slower speed, you might develop a curve that you like earlier on. So what I found with this project as I was building the, uh, the full one is that you spend a lot of time just looking at the art develop and then uh, making small changes. So that's the basics of the pentagraph or harmonograph. Um, so now let's go over to the workbench and I'll show you the version, whoops, that I have built and uh, we'll put it into motion. So, ooh, my focus is gonna hate me because of those Legos, ha. Huh. I might cover that with paper too. I've noticed that this camera autofocus flips out a little bit when it has high contrast uh, repeating lines. So, okay, so here you can see, um, I'm gonna move this forward and I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, I wanted to, actually I've evolved this design. So the first one I made is actually fully pulled apart because it was just barely held together with, with enough Lego to make things work. Uh, and here's a updated one I made that's smaller uh, than my ultimate one, or final one. Uh, but I can hold this up to the camera. So you can see here I've got a Cricut um, and I 3D printed this nice uh, Cricut to Lego mount that the Ruiz brothers modeled. And then these are driving, uh, the Cricut's driving two DC motors. And again, uh, in this case, I'm using some uh, 3D printed um, uh, TT motor mounts to Lego. And then I'm running each of them with a Lego, uh, essentially a pulley. These are called half bushes, but it's essentially a pulley uh, to gear reduce it uh, and not much gear reduction. This one travels pretty fast. Uh, and then I've got these little pegs that I can set arms into. Now, uh, someone remember had mentioned the um, pantograph. You don't actually have to use a pantograph with these machines. So here's a simpler style uh, mechanism for the armature where I just have two arms with a central pivot and then the pen at the end of it. Um, so actually let's throw a piece of 
caper on there. Uh, one thing I recommend with these is make it easy to pull the arm on and off. So that's why I've got these pegs um, because you end up changing pens out and pulling caps off a lot. So I'll sit down this. I don't know why I'm doing this holding it midair. Let me zoom out a bit. But I am because I don't want to move the other one. Uh, and let me plug that power back in. You may be able to get away with battery power for a little while, but it draws uh, enough current and you're running it so long that I am using a wall adapter. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that paper down. And let's put this into this view here. Oh, <laughs> I just knocked the thing off. All right, let me move that camera. Let me turn this off. Let's set this back in here. So you can see with the Lego pegs, you can change your um, positioning of the pivots and things very easily. Um, but I'm also changing motor speeds using the Cricket and Circuit Playground Express. There you go. Okay, so you can see this. So this works fine, it's just smaller. So the, the effect that we get from uh, the pantograph, which is that scissor mechanism, is that we're gonna amplify that motion and get bigger drawings. So let me move this camera back out here. And now you can see I'm setting my uh, armature at an equal distance. Pull the cap off. See, we should be able to see the drawing there. So let's run this one. So this one runs much slower, you can see, because I've geared it down. So uh, that tends to give me a nicer line. Uh, the line quality is nice and even when it goes slow. You just don't get as much vibration and slop in the system. Uh, you know, Lego works well to put this together, but you also get um, some flex and slop from the plastic and the, and the connections not being perfect. Uh, but you can see with the settings I have right now, I have a pretty decent speed differential between my two gears, but the same radius, same distance. And so I'm getting a really beautiful um, line, but it doesn't have a ton of repetition in it yet because the speeds are very different. So now what I'm gonna do, uh, if, you, if you look here, what I've done on this uh, setup, so let me pause it, I'm using the slide switch to just pause. And, uh, and I'll just slide a new piece of paper under here. And then I use the buttons to crank the speed up and down and I can crank it down all the way that it goes in reverse. So you get different uh, densities if the two motors are running in reverse versus the same direction. So I'm gonna, go, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and turn it on as a way to cycle all the settings. And so now they're running almost identical speeds pretty close to it, so what you should see is a very tight trace. I'll leave that alone actually. So uh, here I think I have both motors running at 70% and when I run um, the, when I use the buttons to change speeds, I'm just changing the speeds on the left motor but I'm leaving the other one at a constant. So you can see we're gonna get a very dense design here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this and throw in another piece of paper. And then when I start it up, I'm gonna quickly uh, increase the speed of the left motor. Uh, sorry, uh, decrease it. Yeah. Okay, so now there's a bigger differential between them and you're gonna see we don't have as tight a trace. But I think we have a, a really beautiful shape starting to form here. The other interesting thing is that you can, like I mentioned, you can stop them at a certain point if you like the shape. Um, ultimately, they all make this type of shape that I mentioned before, um, but you may find that if you just drill part way into it, here for example, is the beginning only, and then I did a series of drawings here, working my way through the densities of them. So 
that's actually the same exact settings. Um, we've got a little flip book here. I might make a GIF animation of that. That might be neat. Uh, and you're seeing I have a little bit of skew on this. It's a little bit sideways, so that means that my uh, lengths aren't quite right. So I think I'm off by one peg from being perfectly symmetrical, and that's why we're getting this non-symmetrical shape. So if I pause here, oh, actually, let me show you a cool feature I added. Uh, if I press A and B at the same time, and I did this in make code, by the way, so it's the same thing I just showed in the make code minute. Uh, if I press A and B at the same time, it reverses direction. So now both motors have reversed, uh, and we should get something that works with this drawing because we still have the same differential, but it's going to be a wholly different pattern. So that goes way beyond stuff you can do with a harmonograph because we have the microcontroller and the motor control. Um, so that, let me switch back to there, uh, that is the drawing machine. And then with, uh, with just a couple minutes left, what I wanted to do is show you the model uh, itself. I'm working on a learn guide that'll be up tomorrow. And I decided that since uh, a key part of this project is how you actually build the thing, uh, I wanted to use uh, Lego Digital Designer to make a digital model of it. And that allows me to do instructions easily or animations or things like that. Um, so Someone asked, are those your Legos or your kids? Those are mine with a couple maybe swiped from my kids, but uh, I'll talk about that in a second, uh, about sources, good sources for Lego. Um, so you can see here, I didn't have a TT motor, so I just threw in this weird piece, whatever it is, and a, and a shaft. Um, but one of the key things I'm using is Adafruit sells this little TT motor to Lego cross axle um, guy for just a couple of bucks. It's called the TT to Lego axle. Uh, and so that has the TT motor flatted shaft on one end. And then once you have that cross axle, you are now fully in Lego world and you can connect to all the gears and pulleys and things. Um, so uh, as you saw, my first one was pretty dense with Legos and a lot of hard to find or not so hard to find parts, but a little more specific parts. I went to the Lego store and they have a pick a brick. And this piece right here was in, whoops, move one right here, was in the pick-a-brick. And so it's this big uh, round four by four block with a smooth hole in the middle. So I decided, you know what, if I just stack up a few of those, I have a place to um, put my axle for these, get these out of the way here. I'm sure there's a faster way to do that. I didn't group anything. Um, and so that's all that's going on. The axle is sitting there and I'm using a a band you can use the Lego belts, but you can also use the little bands that you make bracelets from. Those little magic bands work great for this. Uh, and so you can see I'm going from small to large, small to large. So that's gearing it down quite a bit. And this gear, uh, in an earlier version, I was actually using gears, but in this this version, I'm just using this to have um, the uh, pegs to 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 connect my pantograph to. Uh, at different two different locations. You could get away with using any Technic brick that can uh, stick securely to an axle on one end. It doesn't actually need to be a circle. Uh, and so here's the here's this funky, you know, this just happened to be some of the bricks I had. That other other version was much simpler. Um, let's let me open that other one up. Let's see, the scissor. No, not the scissor, sorry. The simple, I think I called it. The simple. Yeah, so here's this much simpler one that'll do nice, small, little compact drawings. Uh, so I thought that was cool. I haven't used Lego Digital Designer in a while, and it's really nice and easy uh, to work with. So uh, that is your sort of tool and tip and technique of the, of the week is go check out Lego Digital Designer. Uh, it's uh, a very, let's see, someone asked, a very good source for specific Lego pieces is BrickLink. Yes. Uh, so when I publish the guide, it'll include the list of all the Lego names of the bricks, and then you can go to BrickLink uh, if you want to just get them all. Try to find them from one or two sellers so you minimize shipping. Um, and then I was going to say another really good source for these, most of mine come from Mindstorm, especially version 2, had loads and loads of great bricks, and I think NXT has a lot of good beams. Um, but also if you look at any Technic set, especially on sale, there's a fire truck, I think it's like an airport fire rescue truck, right now for maybe 80 bucks, and it has a whole lot of great Technic parts, lots of gears, pulleys, and so on. So any of the larger Technics that are trying to 
make um, differential drives and transmissions. We'll have lots of beams and, and pegs and, and uh, bricks. So uh, let's see. Am I forgetting anything? I feel like that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, please stay tuned for uh, the learn guide coming soon. And uh, let's see. Yes, yes, we've covered that. The simulator, awesome. Uh, before I forget, I do want to mention again that the coupon code, hey, that's too many of me. Coup coupon code for the week is DRAWBOT, uh, based on our good friend here, the DRAWBOT. And uh, you can uh, put tons of great stuff in your cart. This project happened to use a Cricut, Circuit Playground Express, two TT motors, the TT motor axles, and the five volt, two amp, uh, wall power supply. If you wanted to go get that, throw it in your cart, you're going to get 10% off using this coupon code. Uh, coupon code is not Dr. Awbot, but I wish it were. Um, and yeah, so the question for the Learn Guide, will I give pick a brick information for sourcing these bricks? Yes, uh, I'll have all, all of that info there, so you should be able to uh, find the bricks. But also the other thing is, I've made three different versions of this pretty quickly. The first one I made was in about 15 minutes with just kind of whatever bricks I could find because a lot of them do the same sorts of things. Uh, last tip, using pulleys and bands gives you a lot of freedom. If you use meshed gears, you've got to be much more meticulous in your design uh, of how those axles are going to um, uh, space with each other and it's hard to change your mind. So I really recommend looking at the pulleys. This isn't producing much torque, so it's a great use of the pulleys and bands. Um, and so let's see, let me see if there were any other questions I missed that we should talk about on air. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Zhu patterns, Seagrover nailed it. Yes, this is absolutely, these patterns are called Lisa Zhu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. A uh, Lisa Zhu pattern is, you'll typically see them in like movies where there's an oscilloscope and you have these two slightly uh, out of phase uh, sine waves that kind of loop back on each other. So that is a Lisa Zhu pattern, and that is exactly what these type of drawing machines create. Um, uh, uh, another one to check out, so there's a, let me see if I can bring this up. Uh, Primograph is a beautiful, it's no longer made, beautiful um, drawing machine by the same guy who did the cycloid drawing machine, Joe Friedman. Uh, so Primograph does what we're doing uh, by changing out the ratios of the motors and uh, talks about a lot about the, the harmonics of the different prime numbers of the gears. Very fascinating subject. Uh, and he also created this beauty here. This, this one you can see is uh, the roulette type. So it has kind of both features going on. We have uh, the scissor and the, the different ratios driving it, but we also have the turntable. So you get these amazing patterns. Uh, Joe is making one with Think Fun. Uh, it's a Kickstarter right now. He's going to make like a plastic version of a smaller one of these that's going to sell for, I think, less than 30 bucks, which is pretty amazing. So way, way cool stuff. Uh, yes, thank you for pointing that out, C. Grover. That is a Lisa, Lisa Ju pattern, and maybe one of our French speakers in the audience can correct that pronunciation. Uh, all right. It is like a high-tech spirograph. You are absolutely right. Uh, good. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been John Park's workshop. I'm going to go take some pictures of this thing and finish off the guide. Uh, so look for that tomorrow. It should be out by tomorrow evening, Eastern time. Uh, and I will see you next week for another project. Uh, and the, uh, the hint about what's going on next week is um, neon. Thanks, everyone.